Time and again, we hear politicians warning us of the debt and deficit, saying we just can't afford to do anything about the multitude of problems facing Australia right now. From environmental decline, climate change, growing inequality, our real purchasing power flatlining, persistent unemployment, and an ageing and outdated electricity system. In this video, we'll show you why Australia will never run out of money and why debate around debt and deficit is just a distraction from what really matters. To help us understand how our economic system actually works, we'll explore the principles of modern monetary theory, or MMT for short. The field of MMT is not new and has been developed by experts over three decades. MMT is based on three key insights. One, monetarily sovereign governments face no purely financial spending constraints. Two, all economies and all governments face real limits relating to what can be produced and consumed. Three, the government's financial deficit is everyone else's financial surplus. Let's explain these three points in simple terms. Monetarily sovereign government means the national government of a country is in control of its own currency and finances. A government has monetary sovereignty when the national government can spend its own currency. For example, the Reserve Bank of Australia, the government's bank, facilitates federal government spending by typing numbers into private bank accounts on the government's behalf. The government taxes in its own currency. The ATO only accepts Australian dollars. The government's currency is freely floating on the exchange markets. That is, its value can rise and fall against other national currencies, such as the US dollar and the Australian dollar today. The currency must not be exchangeable at a fixed rate for anything else, such as gold. Up until 1971, the US dollar could be directly converted to gold. And lastly, the national government does not hold any significant amounts of debt in other currencies. Australia has a monetarily sovereign government. So does the UK, the US and Japan. However, the Eurozone countries are not monetarily sovereign, as they do not have their own currencies. Now let's look at the second part of this statement. So, no purely financial spending constraints means that a government who is in control of their currency has no intrinsic financial limit to the amount of money it can invest in a budget. That's right, no intrinsic financial limit. At the moment, our federal government voluntarily imposes institutional constraints on its spending, but these in no way reflect the intrinsic spending capacity of the government. Monetarily sovereign national governments such as the USA, UK, Japan and Australia have no limit to their ability to create and invest money. This is because they all issue their own currency. There's a huge difference between a currency issuer, such as a national government, and a currency user, such as an everyday person, a household, a private business or a local government. Currency users must, by definition, fund their spending by either working, borrowing, selling something or by running down savings. First, they need to get money before they can spend it. A national government is a currency issuer. It creates new currency each time it spends and deletes currency out of the economy when it taxes. On the surface, it's that simple. There are more technical things you might need to know about the banking system if you want to dig deeper. Take the words of Ben Bernanke, chairman of the New York Federal Reserve, the US government's bank, in a CBS 60 Minutes interview with Scott Pelley in 2009 after the global financial crisis. Is that tax money the Fed is spending? It's not tax money. The banks have an account with the Fed, much the same way that you have an account with a commercial bank. So to lend to a bank, we simply use a computer to mark up the size of that account they have with the Fed. The chairman of the US Federal Reserve Bank is telling us that they give out money, spend and lend, simply by changing numbers in bank accounts. What he describes applies equally to the intrinsic spending capacities of the government's Treasury Department. There's no such thing as having to get taxes or borrow money for a national government to spend. It's just changing numbers on a spreadsheet. The Australian government is a currency issuing government. It can't run out of Australian dollars. It's never forced to borrow Australian dollars, although it can and does choose to do so. Government bonds, debt, provide a risk-free asset for investors to park their money and gain a guaranteed return. This is no more than corporate welfare. Dollars are the units we use to work out how much something is worth. For example, a house might be worth $500,000 and an avocado might be worth $3. The unit we use to compare these two items is the dollar. In a game of Australian rules football, the units we use to keep track of who is winning are goals and points. Six points make a goal. When a player kicks a goal, the umpire issues six points to that team. 
the umpire never runs out of points and they don't have to collect them first before they issue them. In the same way, a currency issuer, our federal government, is a scorekeeper of dollars. They never run out, don't need to collect them first and are the only ones who can issue them. Contrary to popular belief, the national government doesn't require tax money to pay for its spending. Taxes exist to limit inflation. Inflation is the continual rise in price of goods and services households like to purchase. To change our behaviour like big taxes on cigarettes and alcohol. And to create demand for the government's currency. The ATO only accepts Australian dollars, no other currency. It's necessary for us to pay taxes to keep total spending, both government and private, at a level which will not be inflationary. This leads to the second principle of MMT in part two of this video.